All right then gang, so now we can successfully fetch data from a super base table. The next step is being able to create data. And to do that, we're gonna be working with this create page right here. So we'll have a form on this page that a user can submit and the details of the new smoothie will be in that form. When they submit it, we're gonna try and send a request to the database to create that new record, okay? So what I'm gonna do is make the template for this and a little bit of local state as well to store the different field values in. And I'm gonna kind of speed through that a little bit by copying and pasting little segments of template. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's not really super base stuff and I wanna focus on super base. So to begin with, what we want is a little bit of local state to store the different fields or the different values of the fields of the forming. So I'm gonna paste those in first of all. So we have one for the title, we have one for the method and one for the rating. So the user is gonna import all of these into three different fields, right? Then we also want some kind of form error if there's an error when they're submitting it. So for example, if they don't fill out all the fields. So we're gonna create some state for that as well called form error. Okay, so next up we want to actually create a form and have those different fields inside it. So let me get rid of the H2 and instead, I'm gonna paste in this form. Now that's a lot of code, but I'm gonna walk through it now. So first of all, we have this form tag and we have an on submit handler right here called handle submit. Now we've not created that function yet, but we're gonna create that shortly. But then we have labels and imports for the three different fields, right? So we have, first of all, one for the title, and then we have an input for the title. So the type is text, the ID is title, the value is title, so this bit of state right here, and when the value changes inside this, we fire a function, and that function fires this function called set title. That's how we update this state to set the title to be whatever the value is inside the input at that moment in time. So as a user's typing in, it's updating the local state, right? This is how we work with forms generally in React. So we do that for the title. We also do the same for the method and the rating, but for the method, we have a text area instead. But same again, value is method, and then we have this on change, which is triggering this set method function to update it. Same again down here for the rating, we have an input, this time the type is number, so they can't type random text in there. The value is rating, and we have this on change event to update the local state. So that's the three different fields, pretty self-explanatory. And then this down here is a button to submit the form. Now, if we have an error, if we update that at some point, then we're gonna output the error at the bottom of the form. And we also give this a class so that maybe we can style it later, color it red or something. So I hope that's all pretty self-explanatory. We're just allowing the user to type into a form and we're tracking those values and storing those values in these three pieces of state. Now, the next thing we need to do is create this handle submit function so that it finds that function when a user submits the form. So let's do that, const handle submit and we set that equal to an asynchronous function because we'll be using a wait inside it. All right, so we're taking the event object automatically when we submit a form and we need to prevent the default action which is the page reloading. So prevent default to stop that happening. All right, so after that, what do we want to do? Well, we want to check that the user has added a value for each of these because we don't want to try and send the request to Superbase if say the title is missing or the method is missing or so forth. So let's do, oops, that should be a dot. Let's do a little if check first of all. So if, then inside there, not title. So if we don't have a value for title or not method or not rating. So basically we're saying here, if we don't have a title or we don't have a method or we don't have a rating, then do something. And what I want to do is set the form error and that form error is going to say something like, please fill in all the fields correctly. Something like that. Okay. And then also we want to return right here so we don't go any further in the function because we don't want to submit the form or rather we don't want to send the request to Superbase if there's an error, right? So first of all, we have that. What I'm going to do down here is log out to the console, the title, the rating and the method as well, just to see that this all works. So let me save that now and preview in a browser. But before we do that, we also need to import this use state thing right here from React. So let's do that right at the top. 
we'll say import use state and that's going to come from react awesome so let's save it now and preview so then I'm going to click on create new smoothie and we see this form looking absolutely tripe at the minute but what the hell let's just add in a title some random method and then I'm going to create the smoothie recipe and we should get an error yeah because we've not input the rating over here and it says please fill in all the fields correctly but if we add in a field now we should see all this stuff logged to the console and we do awesome so we see the title then the rating and then the method so this looks terrible at the minute but don't worry we're going to add styles later but at least we have now all these values and we can go ahead and we can try and add these values as a row in the smoothies table so now we know that this form works what we can do is instead of logging all this to the console we want to use superbase to try and add this data as a row in our smoothies table so in order to do that we first have to import superbase from the superbase client file which is in the config folder so let's import that at the top first of all all right and then down here we can use superbase to try and add or insert a new row in our smoothies table so the way we do that is by first of all saying const and again we're going to get two things back from this the data which will be the new row that we've just added if it was successful and also an error if there is one and we set that equal to await super base and then again i'm going to add on the methods on the next line and we say from again to say which table we want to do something from and that's going to be the smoothies table and then after that we want to insert some rows now this is always an array so it's going to be an array of rows if we wanted to add in three different rows we'd have three different objects to represent those rows so each object represents a row we only want to add one so one object and we want to have the title which is this thing right here we want the method and also the rating so these three pieces of state all right and remember we're only doing this if they're all filled in because if they're not then we return right here and it doesn't go down here so this is also going to return us the row that we insert right now that's version one of superbase in version two if you want to get that row back you have to add select on the end because it doesn't return that row by default but since we're using version one i can get rid of that all right so then after this what do we want to do well we want to check for the error if there is one so we can say if there's an error then we'll do one thing and also we want to check for the data so we'll say if there's data we'll do something else so if there's an error i'm going to log that to the console console.log error like so and we're also going to output the error in the form so we'll update the set form error thing or the form error right here so all i'm going to do is copy this and I'll just paste it down here. Okay, so now if we have data, we want to console.log that data as well, like so. And we can set the form error to be null in this case. So we remove the error if there was one previously. Because think about it, a user might submit the form, we might have an error, but then they fill in the form correctly and we get the data back. Then we want to remove the error at that point, okay? So let's just do that for now um, and we'll save this and preview in the browser. All right then, so let's give this a whirl. I'm gonna say for the title, Mario's Mad Brew, the method, don't really mind. The rating is gonna be nine, but I'm just gonna click Create Smoother and we can see we get the error. But remember, once we submit this properly and we get the data back, then this should be set to null again, so it should go away. So let's create the smoothie yep the error goes away and we get the data back which is now logged to the console so this represents the new row that was just added in the table and we have that created that property and also the id as well as these things that we added now if we go to superbase and refresh over here then we should be able to see as well that new row over here awesome so this is all working so there's two more things I want to do. The first thing is to make it so that this doesn't look crap. And we're going to add some CSS for that. But also what I want to do is once a user has successfully added a record and we get that response back, the data, I want to redirect them back to the homepage because then they can see that new smoothie over here. And we can see that because remember, we're fetching all of the smoothies when this home component is rendered. So let's do those two things now. 
All right, so first let's do the redirect. So to do this, we need to import something from React Router DOM, and that's gonna be a hook. So import, use, navigate, we can spell it, navigate, and that comes from React Router DOM like so, awesome. And then down here, we can invoke that. We say const navigate, which is a function, and we set that equal to use navigate. So this hook basically returns another function, which we can use down here. So if we have the data, at that point, I'm going to navigate the user, invoke that, and basically we just pass in the route that we want to navigate to, and that's just gonna be forward slash. So once we get a successful response, once we get that data, then we're gonna redirect them to the homepage, and we should hopefully then be able to see that new record, that new smoothie on the homepage. So that's the first thing we wanted to do. The second thing we wanted to do is update these styles again, and again, I'm being super lazy, I copied these from my repo over here, and we're just gonna paste them in. So let me control V. So we have the forms. So each form is gonna have a background of white. And by the way, these will be for the update form as well later on. So it's gonna affect the create form and the update form. So background of white, bit of padding, max width of this, um, margin zero, top and bottom, auto left and right. So it's central in the page. Border radius, six pixels. So we style the inputs and the text areas as well by displaying them block width 100% of this. The padding is six pixels, border box for the box sizing. We give it a border as well and a bit of margin. And then the button right here, we say the background is the primary color, which is green, I think. Yep, this one. And then we say the color is white, border zero, bit of border radius, padding, font family is poppins and the cursor is pointer. Whew. So hopefully now it looks okay. So let's save this and preview one last time. All right then, so let's go and create a new smoother. Yep, looking a lot better. All right, so let's just call this new smoother, whatever, method, blah, 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 blah. And the rating has got to be 10 for this one. Absolutely amazing. Create the smoother. We should get the data back, then get redirected to the homepage, which we do, and we can see that new smoothie right here. Well, let's go and refresh over here as well, just to make sure that we've got that new record. We obviously have because we had it here, but what the hell, we can see it there as well. Awesome. So now we can fetch data and we can also create data. Now, the next thing I wanna show you how to do is how to fetch just a single record or a single row from this table. 